When should you post a YouTube video? Do the number of likes somehow affect the number of views? And how to figure out where all these views come from? And how to grow them? Well, let's talk about it right now. Hi everyone, my name is Roman and you're watching the Movavi Vlog, your go-to channel for creating cool videos. And today we're going to be talking about how can you make sure your viewers actually like your videos. The very first thing you might think of is to ask them, but not everyone likes leaving comments, so asking is probably not going to work so well. It's pretty much the same story with the like button as well. Luckily, there's another effective way and it's called YouTube Analytics. All the details right after the intro. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel first and hit the notification bell to keep up with the channel updates. YouTube Analytics is a free, built-in tool that is designed to help you analyze the effectiveness of your channel and every individual video on it. If you use it correctly, it will help you understand how to improve your channel and get more views and subscribers. For example, you can use this tool to learn how often your videos are watched and how long your average view is. There is also information on most viewed videos on your channel and some anonymous demographic and geographic data about your viewers. Here's how you can get to YouTube Analytics. Click on your user image in the top right corner. Then go to YouTube Studio and the Analytics section in the left-hand menu. First off, the 28-day data summary will show up. Here you can see your watch time hours, view numbers, and subscriber growth. If you need to know the trend over the last month or for a specific period of time, like 5 days, 2 months ago, click this icon and set the desired period. If you hit See More, a frighteningly huge report will show up. It includes viewer gender, viewer age, viewer location like country, and internet sources your viewers come from. This last type of data is in the Traffic Source tab. By 2020, YouTube has learned to identify traffic sources types very well. That's why there are so many categories here. Let's review the basics. If somebody is looking for something by typing their query into the YouTube search bar to find your video out of hundreds of similar search results, you get a view in the YouTube search category. As you can see, it's a valuable source of traffic for us because most of our subscribers find our videos through YouTube search. Here you can go even deeper and learn the exact search queries that led viewers to your videos. Knowing this will help you understand which topics work best on your channel. Let's go further. External means all the views you get from outside YouTube. How is this possible? Well, it's easy. A YouTube video can be found through the Google or Yahoo search engine or any other search engine. It can be also posted on social media or someone else's website if it's not private. If you hit external, you will learn exactly which sites, search engines and social media platforms all of your views come from. I think it's a real magic. It's like all seeing eye. All right, let's see what's next. All the views that come from the column of suggested videos it appears on the right side of any video you're watching on YouTube, in case you forgot this how it looks, fall into the suggested video category. If you are as stubborn as me, you can go deeper and learn what videos your content was attached to as suggested. This item with the non-intuitive name Browse Features includes a few different situations in which a user might run across your video. They may see it on the main YouTube page, in the trending section, or their subscription feed. Basically, this traffic source is somewhat like suggested videos, but a bit different. I don't know if it's true for you, but YouTube used to offer me all kinds of nonsense on the main page. But lately the algorithm has become smarter and now I do hit the recommendations on the main page more often. By the way, how do you usually find new videos to watch? Do you look for something specific through the search or click on the suggested videos? or check the trending ones, or watch only the channels you're subscribed to. Just tell us in the comments, that would be very interesting to know. The rest of the traffic sources look more understandable. That's channel pages, end screens, playlists, direct or unknown links, and notification. The very last one on this list covers all the views your subscribers bring you by clicking on the update notifications. That's exactly why we always ask you to hit the notification bell. Now let's go back to the overview page. 
scroll down to reach the top 10 of your videos. Here you can learn what the audience and of course the YouTube algorithms like best. You should pay attention to this list when you have to come up with a topic for your next video. And if you click on see more, you'll see the full list of your videos. And you'll be able to check the statistics separately for every single one. Even the time when you upload your new videos can affect the final number of views. In the real-time section on the right, click on details and then you'll see the bars that represent the number of channel views in each hour. This information will help you choose the best time to publish new videos. I think now it's time to go to the second tab called reach and take a close look at the impressions and impressions click-through rate values. Well, you need first to understand how impressions differ from views. An impression counts whenever YouTube shows a preview of your video to users on the main page, suggested video section, YouTube search, and so on. If a person clicks on your video and watches at least 20 or 30 seconds, it is considered to be a view. The ratio between these two parameters is simply click-through rate, or CTR. It is measured as a percentage. This way, if you have a lot of impressions and very few views at the same time, the CTR is low. Yes, in this situation, you need to work on video naming and preview pictures. But don't get too carried away. Clickbait will make it even worse. If the video title and thumbnail are misleading, viewers will most likely open and close the video right away. This will either drop the audience retention rate, which will lead to fewer views, or not count as a view at all. The Neighboring Engagement tab contains tops of videos and entire playlists compiled according to different parameters. Here, you can learn your watch time hours and average view duration expressed in minutes. The first parameter represents the number of hours people spend watching your videos. It consists of two factors – the number of views and the duration of each view. The second value represents how long an average view of your video is. And that's very important, because the longer the average view duration, the better your video from YouTube algorithm perspective. A longer average view duration increases your chances for your video to rank higher in YouTube search and be suggested to other users more often. That's it, likes are actually not the game changers. Speaking of likes, by the way, don't get upset if there are not too many. And don't worry about dislikes either. They won't decrease your views, they might even increase them. The thing that really affects the view growth is the time users spend watching your videos. You think that's all? No way! If you want to know how many viewers watch your content without subscribing to your channel, you should go to the Audience tab. That's my favorite, I would say. All the info you need is here in the Watch Time from Subscribers section. Look how many of you watch our channel but have not subscribed yet. Let's fix that. What do you think? Right in the same tab, you'll find a quite useful so-called unique viewers parameter. But why is it useful? Well, if your video has, let's say, 10,000 views, that doesn't mean that 10,000 people exactly watched it, because one person can rewatch a video several times on different devices. The unique viewers' data represents the true number of people who watch your content. But this number is rather approximate. YouTube says it's done this way for user privacy. OK, let's believe it. Let me tell you a bit more about engagement. I think this is very important. According to YouTube, most users stop watching a video in the first 15 seconds if they decide it's not interesting. This means that you need to grab viewers' attention at the very beginning of the video. But how do you know at what moment your audience starts to lose interest in your video? Well, in cases like that, you need individual statistics for each specific video. Click on a video and, among other things, you will see the audience retention graph. It shows at what point in the video most viewers stop watching it. Why do we need this? If you see failures on this graph, think why the segments of the video could be off-putting or boring for your viewers and don't do it anymore. By the way, audience retention can be more than 100%. This happens if viewers rewind some segments to rewatch them. Okay, this was a very brief tour through YouTube analytics, but 
that was just the top of the features this great tool provides. I personally like to use more advanced tools like uh, customized groups, comparison of these groups, different types of graphs. So if you really like to know more about YouTube Analytics, write me a comment and I'll be happy to cover this topic for you. I hope after this episode of Mobavi Vlog, your new videos will be watched and even rewatched many, many times. Thanks for watching and if you find this video somehow useful to you, Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell, so you won't miss our new episodes. Take care.